Barker has finally arrived only three years after launch and a decade after the first conception. For the first time in history, a spacecraft has touched the sun. NASA's Parker Solar Probe has now flown through the sun's upper atmosphere, the corona, and sampled particles and magnetic fields there. The new milestone marks one major step for Parker Solar Probe and one giant leap for solar science. Just as landing on the moon allowed scientists to understand how it formed, touching the very stuff the sun is made of will help scientists uncover critical information about our closest star and its influence on the solar system. Thomas Zurbuchen, the Associate Administrator for the Science Mission Directorate at NASA headquarters in Washington says, not only does this milestone provide us with deep insights into our sun's evolution and its impact on our solar system, but everything we learn about our own star also teaches us more about stars in the rest of the universe. Parker Solar Probe In August 2018, in Cape Canaveral, Florida, NASA launched Parker Solar Probe to touch the Sun. After spending a few years spiraling closer to our Sun, the spacecraft has finally arrived. Announced in 2009, John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory designed and built the spacecraft, launched on August 12, 2018. It became the first NASA spacecraft named after a living person. Honorary non-agrarian physicist Eugene Newman Parker, Professor Emeritus at the University of Chicago, a memory card containing the names of over 1.1 million people, was mounted on a plaque and installed below the spacecraft's high-gain antenna. The card also has photos of Parker and a copy of his 1958 scientific paper predicting important aspects of solar physics. On October 29, 2018, the spacecraft became the closest artificial object to the Sun. The previous record was held by Helios II, who broke the record in April 1976. Now, the probe has continued to shatter its record, practically living on the cusp of the Sun. Being the closest spacecraft to the Sun, it can survive the extreme temperatures due to a thermal shield made of carbon composite material, withstanding up to 2500 degrees Fahrenheit or 1400 degrees Celsius. This shield cuts into the sun's heat like a racing car cutting into the air. A racing car cutting through the air makes it easier for the one behind it to accelerate as the wind resistance is lowered. Similarly, the thermal shield pushes the heat away, making a manageable temperature for the probe and its instruments. New Discoveries As it circles closer to the solar surface, Parker is making new discoveries that other spacecraft were too far to see, like the flow of particles from the Sun that influenced the Earth. In 2019, Parker discovered that magnetic zigzag structures in the solar wind called switchbacks are plentiful close to the Sun, but how and where they form remained a mystery. Having the distance to the Sun since then, Parker Solar Probe has now passed close enough to identify one place where they originate the solar surface. The first passage through the corona will continue to provide data on phenomena that are impossible to study from afar. Because Parker flies so close to the Sun, it now senses conditions in the corona that we never could before. Now we can actually see the spacecraft flying through coronal structures that can be observed during a total solar eclipse. Closer than ever before Unlike Earth, the Sun doesn't have a solid surface, but it does have a superheated atmosphere, made of solar material bound to the Sun by gravity and magnetic forces. As rising heat and pressure push that material away from the Sun, it reaches a point where gravity and magnetic fields are too weak to contain it. That point, known as the Alphane Critical Surface, marks the solar atmosphere's end and the solar wind's beginning. Solar material with the energy to make it across that boundary becomes solar wind, which drags the magnetic field of the Sun with it as it races across the solar system, to Earth and beyond, and, more importantly, beyond the Alphane critical surface. The solar winds move so fast that waves within the wind cannot ever travel fast enough to make it back to the Sun, severing their connection. Until now, Researchers were unsure exactly where the Alphane critical surface lay, 
based on remote images of the corona, estimates put it somewhere between 10 to 20 solar radii from the surface of the Sun, or roughly 4.3 to 8.6 million miles. Parker's spiral trajectory brings it slowly closer to the Sun, and during the last few passes, the spacecraft was consistently below 20 solar radii. That means it's 91% of the Earth's distance from the Sun. On April 28, 2021, during its eighth flyby of the Sun, Parker Solar Probe encountered the specific magnetic and particle conditions at 18.8 .8 solar radii above the solar surface that told scientists it had crossed the alpha and critical surface for the first time and finally entered the solar atmosphere. We were fully expecting that, sooner or later, we would encounter the corona for at least a short duration of time," said Justin Casper, University of Michigan professor. But it is fascinating that we've already reached it. Parker Solar Pro passed into and out of the corona several times during a flyby. This proved what some had predicted, that the Alfang critical surface isn't shaped like a smooth ball, rather, it has spikes and valleys that wrinkle the surface. Discovering where these protrusions line up with solar activity coming from the surface can help scientists learn how events of the Sun affect the atmosphere and solar wind. At one point, a Sparker solar probe deep just beneath 15 solar radii, around 6.5 million miles from the Sun's surface, it transited a feature in the corona called pseudostreamer. Pseudostreamers are massive structures that rise above the Sun's surface and can be seen from Earth during solar eclipses. Passing through the pseudo-streamer was like flying into the eye of a storm. Inside the pseudo-streamer, the conditions quieted, particles slowed, and the number of switchbacks dropped. A dramatic change from the busy barrage of particles the spacecraft usually encounters in the solar wind. For the first time, the spacecraft found itself in a region where the magnetic fields were strong enough to dominate the movement of particles there. These conditions were the definitive proof the spacecraft had passed the alpha and critical surface and entered the solar atmosphere where magnetic fields shape the movement of everything in the region. Parker will continue to spiral closer to the Sun, eventually reaching as close as 8.86 solar radii or 3.83 million miles from the surface. Upcoming flybys, the next of which is happening in January 2022, will likely bring Parker Solar Probe through the corona again. What will it continue to discover? Even before the first trips through the corona, some surprise in physics was already surfacing. On recent solar encounters, Parker Solar Probe collected data pinpointing the origin of zigzag-shaped structures in the solar wind called switchbacks. The data showed one spot that switchbacks originate is at the visible surface of the Sun, the photosphere. By the time it reaches Earth, 93 million miles away, the solar wind is an unrelenting headwind of particles and magnetic fields, but as it escapes the Sun, the solar wind is structured and patchy. In the mid-1990s, the NASA European Space Agency mission, Ulysses, flew over the Sun's poles and discovered a handful of bizarre S-shaped kinks in the solar wind's magnetic field lines, which detoured charged particles on a zigzag path as they escaped the Sun. Scientists thought these occasional switchbacks were oddities confined to the Sun's polar regions for decades. In 2019, at 34 solar radii from the Sun, Parker discovered that switchbacks were not rare, but common in the solar wind. This renewed interest in the features and raised new questions. Where were they coming from? Were they forged at the surface of the Sun or shaped by some process kinky magnetic fields in the solar atmosphere? The clues came as Parker orbited closer to the Sun on its sixth flyby, less than 25 solar radii out. Data showed switchbacks occur in patches and have a higher percentage of helium, known to come from the photosphere, than other elements. The switchback's origins were further narrowed when the scientists found the patches aligned with magnetic funnels that emerge from the photosphere between convection cell structures called supergranules. In addition to being the birthplace of switchbacks, the scientists think the magnetic funnels might be where one component of the solar wind originates. The solar wind comes in two different varieties, fast and slow, and the funnels 
could be where some particles in the fast solar wind come from. Understanding where and how the components of the fast solar wind emerge and if they're linked to switchbacks could help scientists answer a long-standing solar mystery. How the corona is heated to millions of degrees far hotter than the solar surface below. While the new findings locate where switchbacks are made, scientists can't yet confirm how they're formed. One theory suggests they might be created by waves of plasma that roll through the region like ocean surface. Another contends they're made by an explosive process known as magnetic reconnection, which is thought to occur at the boundaries where the magnetic funnels come together. Now that researchers know what to look for, Parker's closer passes may reveal even more clues about switchbacks and other solar phenomena. The data to come will allow scientists a glimpse into a region that's critical for superheating the corona and pushing solar wind to supersonic speeds. Such measurements from the corona will be critical for understanding and forecasting extreme space weather events that can disrupt telecommunications and damage satellites around the Earth. Considering that Parker Solar Probe is a part of NASA's Living with a Star program, its discoveries will continue to explore aspects of the Sun-Earth system that directly affect life and society. Everything we know about the universe is based on what we know about ourselves. So, as we charge into the Sun, only more knowledge awaits. In the meantime, check out our video on the James Webb Telescope while Parker explores the Sun Web Explores the Beyond